Today we are grappling with one of the toughest men in mixed martial arts. He's here to tell us all about the future of the bloody sport and the status of the new MMA leagues fighting the Goliath known as the UFC. Plus we'll also hear about his upcoming grudge match. Ladies and gentlemen, it's The Loop. Joining me from Mountain View, California, to help us make sense of it all, Strike Force MMA fighter Frank the Legend Shamrock is here. How are you, Frank? I'm doing fantastic. How are your ribs, more specifically? I, I, I noticed you, uh, you got kicked in the McRiblets uh, a little while ago, and they, they, were, they were pretty damaged. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I cracked a couple ribs, but uh, it's all part of the game, so I'm not too worried about it. I love that. Like, occasionally, my prompter goes down. You pop six ribs out of alignment. You're like, ah, whatever. It's a, it's a day at the office. But that's cool. Well, I popped them back in. Oh, good. I'm glad you were able to get them back in. Frank, we were all shocked, I think, when Pro Elite went under last year. Um, do you have a, a sort of insider's perspective on exactly what went wrong there? Well, yeah. I mean, I was a shareholder and a consultant for them. And, uh, I mean, basically it was bad business and kind of indigestion. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, from television who really didn't know the sport, who got involved, they spent a lot of money and they didn't really have a way to make money. So it kind of bit them in the butt, you know, in the long term. Do you think there's any truth to the, to the rumors that fighters were getting, you know, I, I don't want to say paid off because there were definitely bonuses being awarded for a certain style of fighting. Do you think that led to the downfall at all or was it strictly business? No, it's just business. I mean, they always try to give you, they'll bonus you for anything. They always try to get you to do stuff, especially in fighting. They want you to be exciting and they want you to be, you know, controversial. But mm -hmm. I don't think that was it. I think it was just bad, bad business moves, bad decisions. And frankly, you got to make money or you're going to go out of business. Do they give you a bonus for a backflip after a match or for straddling <laughs> the cage and throwing your mouthpiece at the crowd? Because why are guys doing all that? I don't know. They're trying to get attention. They, they, there's no bonuses for that kind of stuff. They're just looking for little eyeballs. Right. Well, Strike Force bought the bulk of the pro elite contracts. So how are things going to be different under Strike Force? Well, Strike Force is an established live event promotion that does events for television. That's kind of what pro elite was trying to get to. And Strike Force has been in the business for 23 years. They know this business. They're experts at it. So I don't, I don't think Strike Force is going to have problems being successful in the business. I think the problem is going to be how big can they get and how do they meter that growth as they go along. Sure. And, and well, they're, they're doing it with uh, amazing cards. I mean, the, your, your fight with Nick Diaz, to say people are looking forward to it is a huge understatement. And last month in the press event for this, uh, it's coming up this Saturday, the fight, there was a, quite a bit of smack talk between you <laughs> and Nick Diaz, which is understandable. I mean, you did knock out his trainer in 21 seconds back in 06, but... Do you think Saturday's match is going to go down the same? Are you looking for the big KO? Well, I'm looking for the KO, and I'm looking for fireworks. The good thing about Nick Diaz is he, he brings it every single time. And win, lose, or draw, I mean, usually he squirts blood everywhere. But win, <laughs> lose, or draw, he, he brings it. And that's you got to respect that in a guy. He also brought you the gift of a bird when you guys walked out at the press conference. I mean, do you, do you just chalk that up to, okay, this is all part of the pomp and circumstance? Or did you really just want to lean forward and give him a nice little jab to the aorta? Well, originally I was kind of ticked off, and I, you know, I might have swung my junk at him. But you know, I, mean, I think he's a young kid; he's having trouble expressing himself. And apparently, the two middle fingers are the best way he can say it. Is that why they make you wear cups so you don't go swinging the junk around at a weigh-in? Or well, I, just, I think it's a safety issue. But I uh, <laughs> just wanted to clarify. <laughs> Now, now Nick, uh, Nick, Nick has his jiu-jitsu fighting style, and he says that he knows your style because he's trained with people that you've also trained with. How does your hybrid style compare to Nick's? Well, it's a little bit different. Mine's an aggressive kind of gross motor skill based style. His is more of a passive holding style. Uh, Jiu-jitsu can be an aggressive style. You just got to tweak it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think mine's more of an athletic based system. His is more of a uh, holding system. So I think it compares easily. And I've never had a problem with any jujitsu guys. That was the politest way to call somebody a pansy. I'm just going to point that out. He is a Thank pansy. You. He's a punk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, very quickly, because this is this is actually a concern of mine, and maybe you can put it to rest. Between Strike Force and all the other MMA leagues like UFC and Affliction, do you think they're there's a need for there to be consolidation between the leagues so that the people can see their favorite fighters compete because there's so much debate over who's the best fighter, but we may never see the matchups that can actually solve those debates. Well, we're going to see the matchups because mixed martial arts is going to change. Consolidation is going to happen because the fans will ask for it. When we get to primetime television, which CBS is right around the corner, that's when you're going to get 5 to 10 million people watching this MMA shows, and they're going to demand it. That's when consolidation is going to happen. That's when UFC guys will fight strike force guys because the fans will ask for it, and we've got to give it to them. Well, Frank, I, I sincerely wish you the best of luck on Saturday. I know you like to rest before your fight, so I really appreciate you coming out, taking the time to talk to us. And uh, keep blogging about your cardio and your desire 
there to crush Nick's face in, because I really enjoy you <laughs> combining the two things in 140 characters. It's poetic. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Frank Shamrock, everybody. Thanks for keeping us in the loop. And you can also check out the Strike Force All Access fight this Saturday night on Showtime.